This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and it's my pleasure to be here today with Sweet Jim. How you doing, Sweet Jim? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> Enjoy having you, brother. Enjoy having you, it's totally my pleasure and my honor. And uh, today we're going to do one of our first videos which hopefully will lead into a series of videos on contour carving. Today we're gonna to be talking about fire agates and um, a lot of these techniques can actually be used with many other stones. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be talking about the tools that Sweet Jim uses for his technique and some of the uh, polishing compounds and polishing tools. We're gonna to be discussing hard burrs, cut off discs, polishing compounds, polishing burrs. We're gonna be chatting about which ones might be the best for you. It looks very intimidating. I know folks, uh, all of this stuff, you know, you might think that this is thousands of dollars, but what we're gonna teach you today can actually be done very affordably with stuff that you can get from Harbor Freight or Walmart. A lot of these tools can easily be found on websites such as Kingsley North and Cutting Edge Supply, Johnson Brothers, etc. Um, we're going to be talking today particularly about this very affordable brand, AZ Dent. All five of these together, I believe, cost a, just under $60. There are uh, many different types. We're gonna be chatting about you know, what the colors mean and all that stuff. And there are other premium brands, but today we really wanted to focus on affordability to get you folks carving from home. Exactly. And um, some of these diamond burrs are very similar. This kit right here of 50 pieces is $20. How much does the... Uh, oh, that's probably a $60 uh, um, burr. And that's actually a cutoff wheel. Here, I'll show you. It's a Varencore. And how much does this burr here cost? Uh, 40, $45 a piece. So, so you can get them what? from $45 a piece down to... 19 cents a piece. Oh, that's right. These cost 19 cents. And um, essentially, depending on what you're trying to do, you can get very similar results um, between the two. Absolutely. Uh, so, Sweet Jim. Yes, sir. Really? Let, me, let me take over for just a minute. Please and thank so, you. So, just quickly, um, let's discuss safety. You need, obviously, you need your safety glasses. Um, highly critical that you have either a respirator like this, a, a, your typical, um, N95 mask like this. Oh, I'm sorry. And here's another one that came from Harbor Freight today. This was, uh, $29. A, no, no, this one was the, yes, you're right. 29. Yep. This one here is $19. Either one of them, this is better than an N95. So you need at least N N95. Yep. So you want to have at least that. You don't want to be breathing the, the ground dust. And uh, so, causes all kinds of bad problems. So, so safety equipment, you got your glasses, you've got your uh, breathers, and uh, you know, I use uh, magnifying which helps keep stuff out of my eyes. And those can be very affordable. It's again in uh, Harbor Amazon, Freight. Yeah, you, Harbor yeah, Freight uh, yeah, at 10, Amazon. 15, 20 bucks. Exactly. So, moving along here to the burrs. We're going to try and it's, my goal my goal is to get you guys into this for as little as possible. Today, I bought a I think my fourth or fifth one. I have uh Fordhams and I have the less expensive ones from Harbor Freight. The two that I have here on my um, on my uh, carving station. You have three, and now I have three. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I have about five of them. But oh, wow. anyways, so I, I bought this today. This comes with the the tool and flex shaft, 
hand piece and a foot control. Honestly, I don't use the foot controls. I buy these extra from Amazon, and this is a variable speed. I'm gonna turn it on so you can hear. You turn this on low, and it's variable. And then there's a high. Anyways, so I prefer that. Uh, it's hard for me to work my feet and do what I'm doing up here. So, moving on. So, so and, and here, uh, so this is $45. A Dremel, you can get these from anywhere from, you know, this style here. I think and, this and, is $30. Yeah, $30, and this, give or take. And then this one here is a, 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 um, a standard Dremel, and, you know, those are various prices. Most everybody has one of these. That I one's older than me. Well, yeah, but that's style. Here, right up here on the <laughs> yeah. wall, right here, is another and then that one's that I think that's like a fifty some dollar kit. So once you have your Dremel, whether you buy uh oh, he's, yeah, <laughs> that should work, right? Turn it on. It's a rechargeable. You so once you have your Dremel, whichever you prefer, and I'm sure that if you get into this, you're going to have multiple. And um, so that being said, let's look at the burrs. There's a whole many different types and styles and and shapes um this here is is your low end this would be a plated burr these are centered burrs this kit here for 50 of them i think is like 20 un, under 20 dollars these here i buy them in groups of 10 i think this is like 35 dollars. so these are about 350 a piece and so so i go a little overboard because um well, I just do that. <laughs> and and here's another way of storing them. Same type. These are all basically a sintered burr, which means that the diamond is impregnated in with the metal, and it's not just coated. You can wear these down to the shaft. And here, like I said, so these come 10 at a time. Now, also, you have higher-end burrs, so it would be low-range, mid-range, and then high-end. And all these here were custom ordered. And I have a lot of different different styles that I like. This drum works really good. I think this was a Diamond Pacific I got. And then here are um, dental tools. Again, it has a very small shank. I, I forget the exact size, but the Harbor Freight flex shaft tool will, will mount those no problem. One thing worth mentioning, the, um, the truck style handpiece will be able to grab onto the very small dental burrs. All the way up to a, a big burr. True, but when it comes to Dremel brand and other rotary tools, sometimes they use collets and you only get two sizes, uh, which usually do not hold this size. So they do make a chuck for Dremel, an aftermarket chuck. I believe it's about $5. That will be down in the description section, of course. We don't have one to show you, but the chuck fits inside of the Dremel, then you can finger tighten it. So And, and mount and all the different size burrs. Yeah, don't be discouraged to buy um, these very affordable dental tools just because you don't have a um, collet for the Dremels or rotary tools that you're using. And another quick thing I'll mention before we move on, when you are contour carving, which would be carving down into different bubbles, these smaller bits can get down in there and, and carve these areas where something bigger, you might not be able to get in there, you'd be wiping out the sides. So again, you're gonna you can, you can get started cheap if it's something you wanna do and continue with, it's fairly easy to, um, um, upgrade as you go, but the biggest thing is get some, get some, uh, get some basics and get started. Definitely, I would recommend getting if you're if you're on a budget, getting an affordable um, large set like this, where you have something to remove mass material and also get something for finer work. Together, these is probably twenty one dollars right there. And remember. This can be done with sandpaper too, but you're gonna spend a lot more time doing it. <laughs> All right, Jim, before we move any further, can you tell us what contour carving is? Yes, contour carving is basically this. You have a fire agate that you have to, to mold to a contour. You just can't take and grind it flat and make a cab out of it because you'd ruin all the color. So you have to 
create contours or hills and valleys in the stone. Same thing here. Beautiful stone. And, and that's contoured, not just a flat cabochon. So we're going to not only teach you how to make cabochons later in a further videos, we're going to concentrate on contour carving. As you can see on this one, you have a lot of bubbles and ridges that you need to get into. That's just a work in progress, but you can see there's some beautiful color. And um, so that's basically it. So contour carving is creating contouring to the, to the uh, bitroidal bubbles and cabochon would be just making something that is just straight and flat. I believe I have an example right here of one that was. This is a spectacular cabochon. Now some fire agates do look great in cab form. Um, this video that we're doing here is going to be talking a lot about fire agates, but the, again, these techniques can be used for small cab, like sculpting cabochons. Mm -hmm. If you wanna make like um, different just sculptures out of gemstones, these techniques will actually apply directly to those. Jade? jade carving jade? Carving jade. Um, I made a little turquoise one while I was teaching myself, as you can see here. And so uh, we're going to be talking about fire agates, but contour carving can be used in many different types of stones. Um, in opal. fact, opal, oh yeah, opal. Fire agate, jade, any sculpture. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's referred to in this because fire agar ha has, has these bubbles. But any intricate carving, you're going to need various types and sizes of tools to make it happen. And another thing I want to point out, all of these, whether it's the cheap one, all the way up to the high-end ones, require water. You want these to be, I have a bucket that sits here, and this is hooked to a water system. I pull this golf key out and... Voila, we have water dripping. If you, if you folks don't um, want to make something like this, you can easily use a two and a half gallon drinking water container. Absolutely. Uh, I've been using one of those for It's, very, it's very simple. And this is just stuff you get from Lowe's. Most of the stuff here um, is just simple stuff that you can pick up at, at most hardware centers. And um, the watering system is easy, but you do not want to run any of these diamond burrs unless you're either having water dripping onto them or having a bucket that you're working out of, wetting the tool, wetting the rock, it's just a lot slower. And we will show that later on in further videos. Let me let me finish up here with the introduction, with uh, kind of explaining the the uh, second stage. So we we shape and contour them with these diamonds, and then we polish with various things. There's diamond paste on 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 felt wheels, bristle brushes. This diamond paste goes from 500 grit to 100,000 grit, and everywhere in between. This stuff is reasonable. You can buy this. It's it's a it's a paste that comes out, and you'll apply it to the to the stone, and you'll work it. These nylon bristle brushes, I really like those. These wools really work good. Again, you'll see it later. Um, I have this sitting out here because this is kind of the first step. Two things I want to point out is I use cutoff wheels, Harbor Freight cutoff wheel, and something you'd order off of Amazon. Here, that's the package they come in. Bottom line is, these is this is what I use to trim up my stones to begin the to begin the exposure of the color layers in the fire agates. Here is how I. Uh, in this case, the stone is dopped up. I super glue it onto a dowel. And I use a little accelerator. Once you put the glue on, you can spray an accelerator and it dries faster. And the only other thing I want to point out is to remove these, I use an X-Acto knife. And basically, you just chip it right off of there. And I've never broken a stone and I've always been able to get the sticks off. Remember, there's other ways. This isn't the only way. A lot of people use dop wax. Whatever you, whatever ends up being your method, you will discover that, and there's many different options that can be done. Okay, so we've talked about safety equipment, the tools we use, the burrs, different types and, and, and price ranges. Talked about, you know, dopping and how we do that. It showed, showed, like I said, the different shafts, shaft tools and dremels. Um, 
I, we will, in this video, be showing a complete carving from rough stone to, to contoured stone to final product. Beautiful. Yeah. Love it. That's why I do it. All right, folks, so in this next part, we're actually going to show you how to polish the stone before we show you how to process the stone um, that would then be polished. Most people can take a rough rock and get the shape that they want, be it jade or fire agate and whatnot. It's easy to dig down and uh, dig around into a stone using an aggressive diamond-plated or sintered burr, but the hard part for a lot of people and the intimidating part is how to polish. So we decided to show you how to polish first, since that's what most people really want to see. Um, and then after that, we will show you how to process a rough fire agate um, to a point where it would be ready to be polished. Again, these techniques and the burrs that Jim is about to use here can be used on other stones. Uh, it happens pretty fast. These AZ dent burrs are really impressive for the price. Just thought I'd let you folks know if anyone was wondering why are we polishing before processing a rough rock. Well, that's what we were doing. Okay. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this fire agate video, I want to uh, give a little demonstration on what I've come to find out to be the most e economical um, way to get these to polish. Pretty much anybody, well, with a little practice, pretty much anybody can get to this point here. I believe even Lapidary Dave could do this fairly easily. <laughs> but the trick is getting it final polished. Those are great. So, I, we have a lot of stuff to talk about here, but my main focus today is going to be on this set here. It's a $51 set from Amazon. It's called AZ Dent. They make all kinds of different things. Um, I, I'm just trying these. But here's what we're going to focus on today. This is the most coarse, then up the line. I consider this to be in the four to 600 grit range, and this takes it to, to a complete polish. And real and and here I keep them right here, so I built a little rack and I have different uh, 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 layers of how much I've used them here. But I just want to show you guys quickly and literally quickly how you can take this stone from rough straight off the hard diamond right straight off the hard diamond uh, burrs to taking it to a high polish. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to use the blue. I'm not even going to use the red, but I will start actually with the red to show you all something, which is pretty, um, pretty interesting. Yeah, I didn't believe this until I saw this actually. Now I've got it on the low side, and I'm going to be on the edge of this fire agate here. You see the groove that put in there? That's at an extremely low speed. And so don't, don't think that these are just polishing wheels, but that's all they are. And they can also help your shape a little bit. But again, I start off with the diamond and then come to this. So we're gonna go right here because this stone here that we're talking about is, is probably further along than this red. So let's start with the blue, which is, I call it step two. I'm going to put my safety glasses on, and I'm going to put, oh, I'm going to take that off, put my safety glasses on, and grab my uh, respirator, grab my little breather. Today I'm going to use just the N95 mask. This is uh, just a quick demonstration, so bear with me here for just a second. Now, so I'm going to take this stone, and I'm going to leave half of it undone, and I'm going to do half of it. So just quickly, we'll start at this end here. And I am, I'm doing this rather quickly, but even though I know it's quick, I can still make my point. So I keep it moving and basically 
that's pretty much it. You would actually spend, you would actually spend a little longer than that, but I'm going to uh, kind of hurry through this to give you this quick demonstration, but it's pretty much amazing. How quickly you can achieve a polish. You can already see right there the shine starting. I would say that that red is actually probably closer to 120 grit. Um. Well, here, well, here. Let me let me say this. Turn up my uh, turn my speed up. I can even take this middle grit and grind a groove into it. It's not as deep. But I'd say, give or take, um, between four to six hundred. So this is the middle stage. We started with blue. It's and already the, getting glossy. Yeah, you can see it. From the hard wheels to the second burr, less than four minutes so far. To the third burr, coming up right now. So you can already see what's happening here. And it's starting to take a shine. These burrs do contour a little bit to the stone. So like if you are tabbing, for instance, these you can actually polish. I like, after I tab, I like doing the edges with these. And it, I like to clean them between steps. And again, I'm showing, I will give you a, a full demonstration when we get into the meat and potatoes of the video. This is just a quick demonstration. So you can rush out and get some of these because I'll tell you what, I sure wish I would have known about this when I first started. Oh, me too. My grandfather's been asking me to carve for over 10 years, maybe 10, 15 years. Um, he wanted to teach me his techniques and such. Here, excuse me real quick. Let me look there. Okay, got it. Actually, you went backwards, Dave. You handed me the wrong one. But that's okay, and I can tell immediately. You can see, you can see that it's knocking that shine that we had on it. But this is the next step. This is actually the third burr, and now we're going to use the yellow one. That's three, and then Sorry this is. That. That's all right. I I didn't catch it because it was working. But now, after keeping it in order. Looks like you could have skipped that one before. Yes, you can. I, I've done these with just three, three passes with the, the, the blue, the yellow, and then off to the white. And again, like I said, this is just a quick demonstration. To the, to the final stage. Please understand that I'm only spending about 30 to 30 seconds to a minute on each of these steps. And I would normally take at least, at least probably three minutes to five minutes instead of one to two. And it depends on the complexity of the, the stone. But this is, is getting my point across. I, I started with bits that were five times this price. Don't get me wrong. They are top quality and, uh, uh, and worth the money. But I found for as much work as I'm doing with these, this is my most economical, best way to go. And basically, for a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff, including the price of these, you can start not only carving, but taking it to a finished product. And I'll wipe this off. So under $60 for the burrs, you can use a $20 Dremel. Most of those come with hard diamond wheels. Look at that. He would have done and like I said, it's not perfect, but you got the idea. It's surely uh, um, self-explanatory. He would have seen in just a couple of minutes. 
Now I could spend 15 minutes on this and we're gonna spend probably at least that much in the video. But I just wanted to make everybody realize what scared me away in the beginning is, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? How do, how do I get, you know, which birds do I buy? What? And you know what? It was just trial and error and I got to this and then when I finally found these, it was like the light bulb went off. And uh, I just want you all to know that how it works and that you can do it too. And sometimes I'll get to this point and say, I'll look at it and I'll go, oh, I'm seeing a little bit of bumpy, you know, and, and I'll back up a few steps. So sometimes I'll take, and I, I'm kind of doing that on this stone here. I'll kind of take the stone and take it to a polish just to see where I can get the colors out of it at, what colors will come. You see the different colors in this one, and it's, and it's um, I'll take it to a polish sometimes just to see where I'm at, and like, oh, okay, I think I can go a little deeper. And in this case, I'm seeing that I could do a little more polishing work. I just was using this stone as an example to show you guys how the, the wheels work, and it's clear that I didn't do any polishing here, didn't do any polishing here, and in just a few minutes, I turned that almost glass-like. So thank you for uh, sitting here and letting me ramble, and we'll begin by uh, starting off and, and, and beginning with the, the wet burrs, and we'll take you through the whole process. So, yeah, we're gonna start with a rough stone. He's gonna do some work on these um, cutoff, diamond cutoff discs, talk about some of those. Um, yeah, we'll get through some rough grinding on the hard burrs. But a lot of you folks, I think, um, really can just take off from here. These burrs changed my life, for sure. I really wanted to make this video. I'm so lucky that um, <laughs> Sweet Jim has taken the time to help me and to help me help you folks check out this video and make this video and all that good stuff. Jim. Well, it's my, it's my pleasure, Dave, and, and, and like I said, let me just quickly explain something. Here's the burrs that line up here, right here, and here's the same thing from the high-end company and, and um, VH Technologies, Roland is who you talk to there. These, this set here is between $250 and $300, and this set is $51. Don't get me wrong, these are absolutely top of the line. Some of the, some of the things that make these worth their money is this one's a little, this flexes, but firm, these really flex. And um, we'll get into all this in the video, I'll explain it all. So, so there's advantages of driving a Mercedes, and there's advantages of driving a Volkswagen. Volkswagen has the, has the um, great gas mileage, and the Mercedes, uh, has got the smooth ride and, and can do a little more. So, and again, I hope I'm able to get that across to everybody in the videos. And um, so it may look like a little, a lot, and it might feel a little intimidating, but in reality, you can do it. And when we get done with some of these uh, um, videos, um, hopefully you will be doing it. Easily under $100, including rough. Hey, but let me say one more thing. I'd sure like you to, when you get into it, go hog wild. And any questions you might have, you can you can leave us some some uh, um, questions in the in the comments, and we'll try and answer them. Can I leave your email in there? Well, sure. Either either that, or we need to set one up that that like a question and answer email. Yeah, sweet Jim's lapidary. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to start a new email so that we can do that. Hey, so not with only that new email, you have to start a new YouTube account. Oh boy. No, we're just going to use. <laughs> no, we're going to use that email for questions, and we'll link it in the description. And um, I'll try and answer any questions that I can that I'm able to. And I look forward to possibly Zoom classes. One-on-one um, -on -one training, group training, and as many videos as we can put out. Fantastic. I'm going to have to look at that in the daytime. The lighting in here is just so wild for uh, cameras. Yeah, here's another one where we polished half of it. 
This is the one from the live video. Mm -hmm. Another fine example that it's pretty sweet, pretty smooth. All right, let's get started. Yeah. Can you explain ghost fire again? Well, ghost fire is where you have, well, first of all, this is where it occurs. In, in the reddish portions of a stone, see how it's, see how this is like a clear, and then it goes a little red here, and then it gets dark? Well, the dark is gonna have the color in it. Ghost fire would be something in a clear, in the clear area that, and a lot of times it's blue and green, and that, that goes away. All you got to do is breathe on that wrong and that ghost fire is gone. So on this particular piece, all of this orange right here. There's no, that's no fire in there, but I'm just saying that's where it occurs. I will show you examples of what ghost fire actually is. And, uh, and, um, and it'll be a little more explanatory, self-explanatory at that point. So when you look in a stone from the top, and you see the greens, and you put it up to the light, like up in this corner, and you see through it. So if these greens were in this very tip, that would be ghost fire. It's not on a layer. It's within. It's it's within. It's within the agate. So and sometimes it's really cool. Other times you want to go down and find it. You can see how the layers stack in here. Well, it's it's kind of visual. See, I've already kind of ground down on this to look and to see what layers are in there. Um, and there's no real good example of ghost fire in that. So first of all, back up, look through it. So if we were seeing color in here on this side, that color would be ghost fire. Okay, so here, here's an example here of a piece, and, a, and somewhere there's a negative of this. So this popped out during mining, and, and it's not been polished. You see color there, and, and, and if you ground, grind down, as you grind into this color, you would, the colors would change, okay? So this is all solid color that's all laid down in layers. Um, a lot of times when a stone is this pretty, just off the get-go, I'll polish it. So this is all pretty solid colors. Right here would be a piece that you could look at and wow, look at the color in that. Well, that color, if you go up to the light, that's ghost fire. That's not on a layer, that's within, that's within the stone. Now they cap this piece and, um, and you can see fire in it. But it's ghost fire, and, and, and this is a great stone. It's worth whatever the amount is um, that whoever would want for it. But you gotta understand, if you're gonna go to carve something like that, you're not gonna ever enhance the color on that. A stone like, a stone like this now, this is a good example. So ghost, ghost fire would occur in the clear or in a orangish layer like maybe in this area here you'd have ghost fire but down here this is where the color colors are going to be and they're going to be stacked on top of each other very thin layers so the first thing you would do is you would remove this clear this clear uh, uh, calcidony from the top and get down into the fire which would be sitting down in that layer there and 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 you'd follow it so the first thing I think we'll do is we'll, I'll show you how I remove um, mass, the masses of the, of the stuff off the top without grinding through it. So I have a cutoff wheel. What I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm gonna pop a mask on. I'm gonna give you a little example of, of how I would start from a piece of rough that's coated like that. And if you look in my, my little goodie basket here, Like this one here doesn't have it on top, but you can see color and you're gonna work down to that. And I would, I would grind the side to see the layers and then decide how I'm gonna approach it. So every rock is different. 
Can you show us a piece that has a good example of layers? We had one earlier. It might be over there. Yeah, no, here, here, here's, here's a piece that has a good example of layers. Um, we, we're going to trim until we get to that piece. I think that's it. Let me see that. I'll keep it wet. All right. Yep, perfect. There you go. So you see right in here, there's multiple layers. There, right in the middle, there's a darker one. And then there's layers below it and above it. All those layers can have different colors and you have to grind down to them this way to get to it. And if you show the top, you see the top's beautiful. So the dilemma of the fire agate carver is, do I say, wow, look at that. I'm happy with that. Let me just get this into shape and polish it. Or do they say, no, nah, let's dig down and see what comes up. So it's really preference on what each individual carver would want to do. Um, and over here, here's kind of an example. If I, if you look at this right, in here you've got color showing, but if you kind of handle it, it's really probably ghost fire there. So the main heart of this stone would be your layers here, and they probably continue into here. So do you look at this and you say, I have, I have a. On the top here, I'll get it wet. You have, you have a, a, a gold or a, like a, a coppery color, and you can see kind of the green. Then it goes, and then there's another orange or a copper color, and then up here it goes back to, you know, you could look at it from different angles, and you should always really view it. So this stone here probably has several different colors that you can achieve or do you just look at it and say hey i like that i'm going to clean the edges up flatten the bottom and we're going to call that our stone so in theory if you get good enough and you have the patience and you have the technique you could have a stone with all one solid color if that oh, color bar absolutely is that, absolutely that's, <laughs> that's what you shoot for absolutely absolutely and so and, and then the other way around, if you have one solid color, like you just see gold and you know the, the color bar is there, you can mix and match. Absolutely. So like this one here, you can clearly see that there's greens in there. And I could grind down and hit those greens, but I really like that saginetic spray that's throughout it. I'm going to let you hold that and zoom in on it. So a lot of times it's really up to the carver how, where they want to take their stone uh, and, and, and how much work you want to put into it. Um, and that's going to be what you get out of it. So I'll give you a quick demonstration on, on um, for example, Right on this stone here. Oh no, we'll go back to that original one. This stone here has color down here, we think. It surely has light layers in the right shape, but we've got to get rid of this. There's a technique that you can use. You can slice it with a cutoff wheel and break it off. You could and, use a trim saw or you could grind uh, it. Yeah. You could just take this over to the 80 wheel on your cab machine and grind down. That's kind of like what a window stone is. The, the miners will take this stone out and go, oh, and they know by looking at these things, oh, this one's got potential for blues or greens. So they'll go over there to their, their 80 grit wheel and they'll grind down right here and expose a window. And then you'll walk up and look at it like, like this and say, oh yeah, well, and this is a little more further along, but oh yeah, look at that, you know. You're gonna pay more because they did the labor to get down to window that. But if you watch this, it's not really that hard. And no. for the sake of this video, we're gonna do this cutoff disc style because this video is all about doing this on a budget with tools you can get from Harbor Freight and from Walmart. Uh, and then the polishing set, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, is very affordable as well. So if you don't have a lapidary grinder, you don't have a trim saw or even a tile saw to put trim saw blades on, this might be an extremely good method for you. Uh, work at your own risk. Don't just jump into things, you know. Oh, you got to be you, careful, yeah. You but... can always find a way to hurt yourself, but essentially, you know, you touch, it's not really going to cut you, but you can find a way. 
Yeah, the higher this thing spins, it's very thin. So if you were to, if you were to slip and put your thumb on it, so if I started it and touched it, it's not going to cut me. And especially when you have water running over it. Um, but if I was to jam that into my finger as thin as it is, it would cut in. Yeah, just a little quick. Use, use common sense. Safety gear on, stone, got a good drip of water going. And um, so what I would do on this one, I'd want to stay out of this lower area, but I want to remove the white. So I will grind down. Right about there. Do a couple of cuts. And one more. And let's do one more here. So what are you doing exactly right here? What I've done is I've cut four slots into it. And then I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a, uh, uh, a little screwdriver between them. And I'll just pop them off. So now it's not all the way off and you can you can grab the edge with a little pair of pliers. And basically I've removed most of that. We could also cross it. Also, don't waste your don't waste your wheel when it starts getting dull on the end. You can actually take and use the side of it. Like so. So now we've come down into that stone to where we're real near where the color is going to lie. You can look in there and you can look in there and see. Can't quite tell yet. So the next step, I'll use an 80 grit wheel and we'll get down and see see what's on this first layer. See if uh, see what's hiding down below. Okay, so next we cut we cut our we cut the uh, uh, the waste off the top. Now we're going to use an 80 grit diamond coated. Uh, in this case, it's not centered; it's a diamond coated burr. And um, oh, pardon me. Now what I'm going to try and do here is, first of all, I'm going to put my safety equipment on. Bear with me one second. Okay. So, like I said, I want to see what's on this layer. So, light pressure. Make cut down to it. Keeping an eye on what you're doing here. You know, the stone took millions of years to grow. You can give it a few more minutes of patience. Oh, too much, too much pressure or too much aggression is, is, is the difference between colors. Colors is value in this material. You can burn right through a color barrier after by being impatient and working the tool too fast or using a bit that's too aggressive. Right, you want, I've got this set at about, um, I'm probably putting a couple of ounces of pressure, three ounces of pressure, and I've got the, uh, uh, the, the Dremel running at, um, oh, well, it's midway on my, on my uh, dial. I'm gonna say that's about three to 4,000 RPM. So keep a look at things. And so what we're trying to do is get down in here and discover what's hidden down in there on that color bar. And once you start getting the colors, stop, examine, 
take your time. Like you said, it took millions of years to produce or for this stone to be formed. You don't need to ruin it in one minute. And so if you don't have this particular shape for her, you can use a cylinder, use the corners of the cylinder. He's using this shape, um, you know, because it was nearby. You, can, you should buy centered if you can, but you can use plated like he's using. Use with what you got. Uh, use what you have. You know, if you buy the cheap set from Harbor Freight, you can still use those too. You might not get all the fancy shapes. Yeah, the imp. So and that's will fast forward. So just take your time. Okay, so I've spent a little time on this, and right here, you can kind of see the color starting to come through. Um, yeah, go ahead. Right there, the orange. Yeah, one. right in there. So you don't, I'm gonna stop carving there. Now I'm gonna use the, the um, I'm gonna go down in other areas around where it's thick and get down to that same color, kind of, just basically in this area in here, above where we fit, we got color exposed here and color exposed here. Now we want to get down in this area and on the edge here to, to, to kind of get to the same layer and just kind of start for, and then we'll, we'll start from there and continue to lighten up on the, what grits we're using and, and find our color band that we're looking for and continue with the carve. Okay, so we've ground on this, and now we're coming down, and color's starting to come. So we're gonna we're gonna do just a little bit more of this coarse grinding. Make sure we find that we're down to where we want to be before we start changing grits and start trying to contour carve this. So people are gonna want to know, Jim. How did you choose that shape, the depths and the valleys of the stone? I'm, I'm, I'm just bringing it out to where the colors are coming, coming out. Okay. If you can come up here, yeah. So you're just slowly being able to see the colors through the chalcedony, right? Right, and now we're getting down to where we start have to be careful. As you can see, there's we're starting to form some bumps. We see the color here with a little line going between it. So this is where we start getting down to where we're contour carving. But then we want to get down to the correct color layer. So I'll, I'll continue grinding. And as the colors come out, um, I'll stop and talk and we'll go from there. So this shape is the shape because that's the way the color band was moving. Yeah, if you, if you look on the side, like we were looking earlier, you see how they're, they're yeah, it's, it's hard to tell where we're at now, but, but but the lines of color form in bubbles. You know, we've all seen the Cal Sydney bubbles. You, you can know. kind of see a gold one right there going across yeah, the top. Yeah, there you go. Now that's what we're going to go down and start hunting for. So, yeah, you see slowly digging through the Cal Sydney. You can see the color is exposed more than it was before. And it gets its shape because the band is not just straight across. Like it's laying on a bubble of Cal Sydney. Yeah. Oh, the bot turtle bubble. Exactly. Well, interesting. And so, like, I think opal, the color bar is a little bit more linear. Oh, yeah. Color bar comes in in a seam. And this is laid down over time. 
take a look here. All on bubbles. And if you look on the side, that's kind of hard to tell until I cut into the side. But basically, there'll be layers of color on these bubbles. And you would have to uniformly follow the bubble down to find that. But you'll see here in a few minutes when I get down into this, it won't be quite as, you know, I'll have to do a little more work to get it to look like this one. But it'll basically, uh, it'll start taking this shape. So if you folks were wondering, that's why it has the odd shape. That's why you don't see um, the best higher agates in cabochon form most right. of the time. And then this is the longest part in all honesty. Absolutely. When I get to the end, it's going to be much quicker. But actually, every step takes time. I would say that you're going to spend a couple of hours to, to four hours on each stone. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll time it and try to be a little more precise on that. But I'll give an estimate of how long it took us to get down to where we want to be on this. And, uh, and hopefully you're seeing that I'm trying to follow the color bubbles and, uh, and not, gr not grind through them. If you look, can you, I don't know if you For can... instance, this corner here is a lot more digging down to, to Exa expose. Exactly. On the left, it's already starting to pop out, so he's going to go a little bit easier on here. Yeah, I'm going to stay away from that area and get down where the darker colors are. That's where I have more digging to do, right? Where, where you, on the edges, you're already seeing the color coming up. And so folks, if you're wondering, oh, I wish it wasn't fast forward, what is he doing? So he's just using the corner of his burr and the meat of his burr. The meat of the burr is to expose, to, to grind away mass. The corner is to start making little crotches where the bubbles are kind of, where the crotches of the bubbles are in the but wave of color. I'm not gonna go too low. I'm basically just going to expose the color then I'm going to change the style and grid of my burr, and, and then we'll start defining it more. Yep. So right now, this is just the mass removal. Uh, yeah, you're not missing much when it's fast-forwarded um, to save some time in the video. Uh, yeah, it would drive on. you nuts if you sat there for <laughs> 45 minutes watching me. You know, I'm sure people dark. would love it, and we'll do a live. Absolutely. We'll do a live, but this is just for the people who don't have four and a half hours. Exactly. That's what's going on so far. All right. Let's do a little more grinding. Get me back up. Uh, we'll get you back going here. And again, I'm going where it's dark in here. I'll, I'm going to do a little editing here. Or, or editing. I'm going to do a little talking. And, I'm, uh, and I'll just tell you what I'm thinking. At this point, for clarity and you, so you can hear me, I have excess water running. And I'm only using my... Uh, my uh, safety glasses. I don't have my uh, my my mask on, but you see, there's no dust uh, coming off of this because I'm flowing it with water pretty heavily. Jim, if you don't mind, I'm gonna fast forward through that. People don't even want to hear you. Well, it's it's okay. All right. You know what I mean? Whatever. People yeah. are gonna be. Um, people, can, if you bring up that you're not, people are gonna notice you. Got it. Uh, well, people that's... love something. Okay, so now I'm uh, okay. So, so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna grind the dark areas. I have my safety gear on, and we're gonna get down to it. And it, and as I get and as I get closer, I move away from the, the color and go to where it's dark. I'm ho I'm hoping you guys can start to see the colors coming through. And, and, and eventually I'll be putting a magnifying hood on and uh, really trying to capture a specific layer or a specific color. So right now, the top of the stone and this side, I, ha I can see the color. I can see the extent of it. If you look at the edges, I can kind of, I can get an idea of what's below down in there, but I just kind of just starting to shape the stone and bring these color, color, uh, color bubbles out. It can be tedious.
Okay, pretty much now, I'm getting down to where I can see all the, all, I can see that there's color below. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna trim off the edge here. Do a little, shut this off. Start the cutoff wheel. I'm going to taper this side down. this a little so I don't have to grind as much I'm gonna basically use the edge of this saw or cutoff wheel diamond diamond cutoff wheel just kind of take a little more shape to the stone Go back to the, and here again, we're, we've used two things so far. We've used the 80 grit, uh, kind of like an inverted cone, and um, and a, I think this is 120 grit, uh, two inch diamond uh, wheel. Um, and again, you can, I have two, two different hand pieces, and uh, this can be done with a, with a, uh, hand piece like this and a uh, and a motor or just a simple dremel tool obviously the simple dremel tool is going to take a little bit longer but let me continue here try to get a little better shape to this or not shape but a little more color pulled out of it i'm doing circles i'm kind of i am going between where i see the bubbles and i'm trying to do the edges that i just cut off to to kind of I won't do the, I'll do the sides a little bit, but I'll leave it alone, the sides alone and the bottom alone. Bottom will be trimmed off. And um, and then of course we'll work the sides. I may end up uh, removing this high spot, but a lot of times I just carve what's here. Again, a perfect example of the of the the bars. Uh, in this case, there's some um, um, several layers that we can go down through, but we're already starting to come to our first color layers within here. I'm hoping you can see that, and then I'll continue to carve. And this is what we would, I would call just rough carving. This is the first layer or, you know, uh, if you were doing a cabochon, it would be the, the uh, first wheel, your 80 grit. And so I'm getting it shaped with the, with the cutoff wheel and this fur. And also I am, uh, I'm coming down to the color layer. After this, we'll decide if we want to dip into the color layers and go deeper or stick with the colors that are going to come popping out with as many layers that are on here i would assume that we're going to investigate to make sure that we're at the brightest prettiest stuff i'm seeing up here i'm seeing uh um some green in there 
Yeah, we're. This is going to be lots of goodies are going to be coming out of this. We'll we'll make some more decisions after we get a little bit more of this uh, darker material off and expose a little more color. But I'll stay away from this edge. This edge. I'm starting to see it down in here, so I'll take it down. And then when I start thinking I'm getting close to that color, I'm going to back off and see what's there. You can see the color starting to form. You can see the contours starting to shape up. So this is pretty much it for the 80 grit. We're gonna move on and um, I'm gonna change out the burr and we'll be right back with uh, continued contour carving. Unfortunately, folks, that's all of the roughing of the stone footage that we have. Um, don't remember why we never really finished it, but pretty much he just went to one or two more burrs. He went from that 80 to, I believe, around a 180, and then maybe something closer to 300 before doing a final polish. But really, you could go from this 80 to the red, uh, the first or second AZ dent burr to start your pre-polishing. Um, another thing we didn't get to show in this video is that he used Diamond Pacific um, Gold Super Polish on a bristle burr. He shows it a little bit in the beginning of the video, but he just does that after the fifth AZ Dent Burr. I hope this was helpful. I hope this inspired somebody. It's really what Jim wanted to do. He was really passionate about helping people. The gentleman would be on the phone for hours and hours just talking to people, helping people. He loved it. Um, I'm sorry I didn't put out this video sooner. It was really hard losing one of my best friends. And I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. But even though this video is incomplete, I felt like I needed to put it out. So I hope you enjoyed. And if anything, I hope this inspired you to at least try to contour carve. And uh, polish your contour carvings, especially if you're on a budget with the AZ Dent Burrs. Anyway, I'm going to put up a couple more clips of us just playing around in Harbor Freight, him showing off some tools that I never really used in this video, and then of us at the Tucson Gym and Mineral Show, him going through uh, the Guzman family's material, which actually was before this video, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, love, and subscribe. Go check out... Um, uh, his YouTube channel, him and Sandy's YouTube channel, JNS Rocks to Gems. He had a shorter, kind of more streamlined contour carving how to video on there. That could totally really help, uh, you if you're on a contour carving journey. Go check it out. Love you guys. See you soon. Good thing I don't need the audio from this because, uh, this is oh, such a, it's yeah, such yeah. a big song and it demonetizes the video. Yeah. So we're looking at... Does it have to be audio? They have to cut the audio out, you know? Here. Yeah, I got it already. Right. 
And this is probably 120 grit. No, that's it's a bad 80, but. Right. And then here, we get the thumbs up on these. <laughs> Get that thumb in For there. Polishing. Get that thumb in there, Jimmy. Cool. That's a short little thumb. <laughs> short fat thumb. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that looks like. Yeah, show me. Twenty-two. Here you go. Oh, we're tearing this place up here. Give it a thumbs up on this. Jimmy! I already did that already. I did that one. Now give it a thumbs down on this one. You mind if I hold that for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not little, but they were big. Right, right, right. Look at right. that. So you traded rough fire agates for that. Yeah, it wasn't, it was, it was like this, but bigger. It was like way bigger. Oh, right, right. It, it had fire on, so that's why I used it. I, I, have, a, I have one at home like this yes. that has fire all over it. Yeah, then it would be A little hard to film because there's lighting right now. I assume it'll look better when. Uh... That's a, a good deal. Yes. Ask your dad why he. Why does he need this? Why, why? Is it not done? Does he like that? Is that a conquistador? So it's a rug. Amazing, even the back, the gold, it's pitted. My saber, it looks like it's uh, 14 or 18. You know, there's a lot of times I wanted to send my dad jewelry I made, but I felt like if I didn't send it to him in gold, that um, it wouldn't be worth it. Look at those little bubbles right there on the side. So I don't know if you, I got it on camera earlier. This is a $5,000 piece. And that's uh, not what it would cost in a store. This would probably be closer to an $8,000 piece. I wish I could get those colors in there better. Pulled out. I pulled that one out. Wow, and he sliced it? Five, yeah, it's like got five different geos on it. No, that's one piece? Yeah, that's one solid piece. It looked like Mickey Mouse before we cut it. What? These are all the ones that I was pulling out. He was telling me about. They're not bad. Not bad at all. Did you polish them? Uh, he did a few of them. I, I just took them out for him. I don't even care. <laughs> he had to have used uh, Vibrolap, right? Uh, I don't. It, we, we had a little angle grinder with the cool. diamond, That's diamond good. blades. It worked pretty good. So what are those lines? Those are called saginetic sprays, and they, well, I wish I knew. I wish I was more of a geologist, but it's, uh, those lines, uh, um, we call them saginite, and in and in, um, in in agate, it's just it's just really really cool. They're very rare. Although these stones here that he has are in the lower price. That's like I think a ten dollar stone. She said. Yeah, that's but what it, I was it, thinking. But it has it has uh, some things that I I really enjoy that that uh, that feature. And I'll show I'll give you some examples. I have a little a couple little better ones. I burned through them a couple times, thinking, you know, what am I doing? Or, or I don't, didn't like them until I really learned what they were, and, and it's really uh, desirable. 
Dude, I'm not gonna lie to you. I would have never known that existed. I've looked at thousands of their pieces vending next to them for years. Mm -hmm. Would have never have known. Would have never known to look. I would have thought, oh, it's, oh, I gotta get that out of there. Right. People aren't gonna like it. Yeah. I, no. Uh, I, there you go. I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I look for those. Dude, Jim. So. Yeah. Are you gonna buy that? Um. No, because I have a lot of it. I'm gonna buy it then. I need because um. Yeah, I'm buying it. <laughs> I'm buying it. Well, very good. Thank you. No. No, yeah. They're hers. Oh, hi. <laughs> so, so we looked at that other piece that you purchased. So if you look at this, do you see the small dots there? They're all uh, like a lot of dots there. Yes. Those are the ends of those sprays from the top. So if you cut it sideways, you'd see the rods. Here, they've cut it over it and you see the dots so you'll see this in a lot of stuff but it's it's um it depends on the angle that you cut it at and um so this is their secret stash stuff oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. it's really hard to film the dots yeah, on my very hard to see that phone and i'm trying to hold it over the bucket so in case i drop this little tiny thing Yeah. There we go, that's easier. And here's a perfect example of the tops of them. Just the little dots, and those are the top ends of the sagenetic um, uh, rods. And uh, basically, this is an end cut of them. And, uh, and here's another little example here, but there's just a little, a couple little pieces. But if you zoom in tight there, you can see some of the lines. Oh, I can definitely see the lines towards the middle. Yeah, and so this is not a secret, but in my opinion, it's a, it's a unique feature that a lot of people don't know about. And, and when you get them educated, it's very interesting. And you know, how many tabs are here? I can tell you hundreds and, and we found two or three, so. Yeah, uh, maybe thousands. That is precious information. Yeah. I thought I've been vending next to them for years, and I would never do. I've heard the name before. Yeah, Sagenite. Uh, you hear? No, I've heard sa Sagenite. 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 Yeah, the Sagenite is usually related to uh, agates. And guess interesting. What? These are agates. Yo, <laughs> sweet Jim. Sweet Jim is awesome, yeah. dude. Oh yeah, you can. You can. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hand you these three back. Okay. And this, you can see. This, you can actually see some of the needles, like those, that, that little V right there. Mm -hmm. Those are actually, and, and there you can see them to the left of the, the bright pieces. Oh, yeah. So, you can see the an, spray. Yeah, the spray is Sagenetic spray. Here you go, my dear. Thank you. Dude. So much. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate you digging through there. Thank you. Look you're at these welcome. little Tabasco geodes. Dude, you're so awesome, Jim. Yeah, so good, brother. Just trying to keep up with you, my bro. So, so yeah, make sure to remind, ask your dad if, if he can get these rough. Yes. I could sell them. Well, you could sell them, yes. but I, you well, know, I would let people know. I wouldn't yes. mind taking a bunch of those. They would sell like hotcakes. Yeah. And what I'll do is um, do a live show where they buy them, and I yes. can cut them wow. if they want it. Okay. And so it's interactive. Yeah. Yes. And a, like, here is an absolute. So if you want, see the dots? That would be fantastic. So those dots aren't just little dots, they're rods, and you're looking at the top cut of them. If you were to cut this through there, you would see the lines. You'd see the sprays. Oh, okay. Wow, I just thought those were another, another little bubble. Yeah. And they kind of are, but it's... Dude. I'm not a geologist, and I wish I was, but um, I'm actually studying more and more about these and, and learning. But I'm kind of new at it, and it's a, uh, just a love of mine, dude. This is, a, you know, my passion. Yeah, agate people, agate, agate is a whole world and universe of rocks by itself. There's some people who don't do anything but agates. Right. Do you know the agate dude? The agate guy or the agate dude? Online? He's a young man. 
Uh, there's a few of them, yeah. yeah. Actually, I watch, I watch, you watch so many. Them all. Yeah, I watch everything, yeah. Hey, it's better than uh, the news. You, you better believe it. The news is actually nuts. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, you would take cash? Hold it. But those are the actual. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. Hola. How are you? And the rod's got nice color. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. It's absolutely to die for in my opinion. And I had one other one to show you here on the end of this, right? Right there, if you look at the end of that, you'll see the little hairs. Oh, I sure do see same, it. Same stuff. I, try, I have to hold it still and zoom in for you folks at home. And that's the saginate spray? Yes, that are the, that's the saginitic spray. Yeah, those are the side view of them. And uh, on the tops of those, it would be really little teeny points of color. And I wish I could tell you geologically how it's happening or what it is. It's just beautiful. That's all I can tell you. Those guys are just making it up. Yeah. No, I'm joking. She, she, I respect geologists. She, she, she painted it. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, you mean them. Yeah. Yeah, that's this. That's the story they told. They told me that they when they, when their grandpa took it to the jewelers, they thought he was painting it on there. <laughs> painted it. How you doing, yeah. brother? Where you going? Okay. Looking good, Sprite. Looking good. Turn around for Zaddy. There you go. <laughs> you out of here? No. We're waiting for you. Uh, what are you guys going to eat? 